Acoustic foam, is it something that's worth spending your money on, or is it better to hold off and wait till you can afford something better? Let's find out. I recently moved into a new studio space, and it's a, it's a bedroom, so it's got a lot of the issues most bedroom studios have. There are a lot of reflections. Can we fix it and make it a little bit better? We're gonna find out. I went on to Amazon and I ordered a bunch of 12 by 12, two inch foam acoustic panels and some of these foam corner base traps. Right out of the gate, it should be said that this stuff is not going to help you with soundproofing and it will not help you with any sort of low end frequencies. These base traps are not thick enough to actually eat up any of the base frequencies in your room. So if you want that for your studio space, already I can tell you not to buy these. Now, why did I buy these? As you can hear, this room is quite lively. There's a lot of reflections it's a small room, so there's sound bouncing away, and I wanna bring some of that down for when I'm tracking vocals and doing YouTube videos. Now, I spent about $130 Canadian on 12 of these bass traps, 12 of these panels. These are the Aero Zoom bass traps, and these panels are by F-Stop Labs. They have reasonably decent reviews. I'm gonna put up the panels, show you how we did it, show you what the room sounds like without treatment, and then show you what the room sounds like with the panels up so that we can decide if it's even worth you spending your money on or saving it and investing it later into better soundproofing. I am in a rental space, so I am limited in what I can and can't do to the room, hence why this is probably the option because I can't really put up giant rock wool base traps. Let's open up these packages and take a look at the actual pieces of foam. This is what we ended up getting right here. These are the acoustic foam panels, corner base traps, and 128 command strips to hold them all up. So these are the instructions. Open the package, soak the foam in water, wring it out, put it in the dryer on medium for 20 to 25 minutes, and then apply your adhesive and put them on the wall. So let's do that. It's been a hell of a week, a hell of a month, a hell of a year. I want to pack my bags and get right out of here. But I be aware that it looks like they're not um, actually two inches, but it should just be because it's vacuum sealed and not actually are they this thin, which is a complaint I saw a lot on Amazon. I saw some complaints online, people thinking that they just got sent foam blocks and not actually the base traps. It's a little hard to tell, but these are sealed together quite tightly. So you would need to try to get them apart in order for them to actually separate into these little base traps. Once we wet them and put them through the dryer, they should pop up nicely. Everything I read online, either people complaining that these panels were super small and not even, and then people talking about how all you have to do is just get them wet and run through the dryer instead of waiting for them to puff up on their own. But some people have claimed that that could take upwards of several days. And I'm just, I'm super impatient. So let's do that instead. While these were in the dryer, I went around the room and I used some isopropyl alcohol just to clean down the walls a little bit, which is what you need to do when you're using command strips, just to help it stick a little bit better and make sure that the walls aren't dirty. These did puff up, no problem. I had to leave them in the dryer for a little bit longer just because there were so many of them. And they all seem to be around the same size. You, you can see just by looking at them right here, they're not perfect. Some of them are slightly different sizes, you know, just, just a little bit, because obviously it's just like cut on a factory line somewhere, probably in China, I would imagine. Now, the major thing that I did notice is that with a bunch of the base traps is there's a lot of these kinds of things where there's little chunks missing out of the actual side, which is a bit of a bummer. Keep in mind that you do get what you pay for, but the idea is to just help break up reflections. So as much as it is a bit of a bummer that the stuff is ripped coming out of the package, I'm not surprised, frankly, as long as it does the job that it's supposed to do, it's not going to perfectly fix the reflections in a room anyway. So who cares really? I'm going to put these up on the wall and then we're going to do a comparison. We're going to do a little shootout and we're going to see what happens. Now I decided to go with the command strip route as opposed to getting adhesive spray and putting it on the back and then tacking them to the wall permanently because again, this is a rental space and when you do that, removing them will rip off chunks of foam and then they'll be ruined. So with these, they, you can just pull them off afterwards and then you could just put them up again. We'll put these on a couple of the panels and we'll just start putting them up. I think we'll start with one of the base traps. So 
I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to put it up in that corner right there. I got to hold it up there for 30 seconds and then that should be the thing. And that seems to have worked. Since that's the holding, I'm going to put up the rest of them and then we'll move on to the panels. I must confess that I'm it's like some really moody lighting. I like that. I have a, kind of a rough idea of where the panels need to be. I think a big thing is putting them behind these speakers because there's ports on the back where sound comes out of and having it shoot directly at the wall is causing reflections and it's causing the sound to bounce off in weird ways. So I think the smartest thing to do is throw up at least one panel behind each of the speakers and then kind of go from there. So I'm just going to kind of throw up a bunch of these panels in a way that I think makes sense and then we'll kind of go over what I did when it's all done. Going crazy. Okay, so it took a lot longer than I planned, but I finally treated the room. I'm going to show you kind of where I placed them and say kind of why I placed them in each place. I initially did all the corners with these little base traps. You can see there's one right there there i got this corner and i did this corner you spin all the way over here there's that corner and i had to do it kind of sideways and flat for that corner and then i also got behind this bookshelf there's one in that corner and then there's one all the way over here which you can barely even see but it's there and then i put one right behind me uh, where i sit to try to just like bust up some reflections on my voice. All oh, right, I put one right there as well. For the 12 foam panels, this is the thing that kind of took me the longest. One behind the speaker there, one behind the speaker there, and then I decided to put them behind me to break up some of the reflections coming out of my speakers. I did a little bit of measuring and it should be okay for busting up some of the, the back wall frequencies. And the next thing I did was I put these ones right here, which is when I'm sitting right beside my ears, which I thought would be important to try to bust up anything that's kind of at ear level. And then I put these ones over here for the kind of the same reason, because those are about at ear level when I'm sitting and that's just like a flat wall that's right next to where I sit. And then the final spot, I put four of these bad boys on the ceiling. You get a lot of reflections from up there and I kind of put it right where I sit slash shoot. So that should hopefully bust up a bunch of the reflections that will come out of me talking into the microphone when I'm sitting here and when I'm mixing. Now I can already tell just by being in the room that this has changed the way that the room sounds. It's way less live than it was before. Straight up less reflections, which is cool. I've also got that very large curtain and then I put a bunch of my plushies because I'm like a super, super lame human being and I have a bunch of Pokemon plushies. I put those there. That'll eat up a little bit. I can hear that it's different. I, like I put up the foam. I didn't leave the room so it felt like I had a blanket over my head. <laughs> it was weird. But after like leaving and then coming back the next day, I could definitely tell that it is now way less bright and way less echoey than it was before. Enough of the talking about what I did and why I did the things that I did because that's just the ramblings of a crazy person. So instead we're going to do a breakdown and we're going to see how the room actually sounds through comparisons with different microphones. Now, yes! Ah! I'm going to use three different microphones for the shootout. I'm going to use a dynamic microphone, a condenser, and my little camera shotgun microphone to give you an idea of how different microphones pick up the sound of the room and how the room is affected by having and not having having the soundproofing. This is what the room sounds like with no treatment using the Rode VideoMic Go plugged directly into my camera. This is what the room sounds like with the acoustic treatment running through my Rode VideoMic Go directly into the camera. This is what the room sounds like with no treatment going through my AKG Perception 100 microphone with no processing. This is what the room sounds like going through my AKG Perception 100 with processing. This is what the room sounds like with treatment running through my AKG Perception 100 condenser microphone without processing. And this is what the treated room sounds like running through the AKG with processing. This is what the room sounds like with no treatment going through a Shure SM58 dynamic microphone and no processing. This is what the room sounds like with no treatment going through an SM58 with processing. This is what the treated room sounds like running through my Shure SM58 with no processing. And this is what the room sounds like running through my SM58 with processing. And now I'm going to sing and play guitar on each microphone so that you get an idea of what the room sounds like with and without the treatment while there's music being made in it. Weird times, weird times, weird times with you. Weird times, weird times, weird times with you. Weird times, weird times, weird times with you. Weird times, weird times, weird times. 
if you. Weird times, weird times, weird times with you. Weird times, weird times, weird times with you. So, does it make any sense to get this foam stuff for your studio or should you skip it? I've recorded a few songs and mixed some stuff and I've done a bunch of work in this room and I can say that without a doubt, the foam has definitely made a difference in the high end and the reflections in the room. It's a little hard to say conclusively whether it's better or worse. I have noticed that when processing my vocals, the high end is a little easier to con get control over, which is always nice. Should you you buy this kind of foam and put it up in your room. If you're in a situation like me where you're, it's a bedroom, it's a rental, and you can't really put anything up permanently, I think that this is an okay way to help deal with some of the reflections and a bit of the echo. You can always just put up blankets, you can put a couch in a room, anything that's gonna kind of eat up low end is always a good thing to do. But if you're trying to create a space that's a little bit more professional, I would say save your money, don't, don't buy these foams, and invest in making some rock wool, bass traps and some actual acoustic paneling because that's really what's going to make the quality difference. There will be links down below to where you can get some of this foam if you would like to buy some. I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't, just you know, think about it and maybe this is the right thing for you. If you found this video insightful, informative, or at least a little bit entertaining, please just obliterate that like button for the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you guys in another video. I'm Andy Negative and I'll catch you guys on the other side. Bye! Yeah.